language and says, what does true conversion consist of? Now, this is important because there are so many spurious and false and counterfeit conversions. So much easy believism in our day. So many millions and millions of people in this country alone, who we fear, say, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I trust in Christ alone. Yes, I believe in him. I believe the whole Bible. I go to church faithfully. But the fruits of their lives don't show the fear of God, the sincere sorrow and the sincere joy and the sincere delight that I hope to speak about with you this morning. Martin Luther said, Satan is the ape of God because he imitates the work of God in the lives of sinners. He's able to produce things in human beings which from the outside look like the real article. But people can be devoid of the real saving work of the Spirit even as they think they are converted. And the Bible is full of these examples. Now, let me just give you some. Uh, I've just labeled them with my own language. And so uh, to give you a, a, a quick flow of it, there's hypocritical conversions. Like Judas, scared, he followed Jesus for three years and nobody knew the difference. There's head conversions, the five false virgins. There's carnal conversions like Orpah. There's Fruitless conversions. Why call you me Lord, Lord, when you don't do the things that I say? There's good works conversions, like Saul on the way to Damascus, persecuting the Christians. He thought he was doing good works. There's Reformation conversions. The Lord gave Saul another heart, but not a new heart. There are legalistic conversions. They'll say it's because I am... Uh, I can't read my own writing here. <laughs> Surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest I have not sinned. There are holier-than-thou conversions. I will stand by myself. Come not near to me, for I'm, I'm holier than thou. You are as smoke in my nostrils and a fire that must be burnt all the day. There are lip conversions. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. There are external conversions, like some of the converts of Nineveh. There are pious conversions, like Ahab. He rent his clothes and walked softly before the Lord. There are emotional conversions, like Esau. He sought a place of repentance with tears. There are affliction conversions. Some people, when they get afflicted, they, they get serious for a little while. Like Pharaoh, he confessed his guilt and said he changed, and then he went right back. There are sickbed and death, deathbed conversions, most of which don't prove true. There are funeral conversions. People go to funerals and they get impressed with death and they temporarily change. There are impression conversions. People can, like Simon the Sorcerer, have impressions of, of miracles and things about Christianity, but their heart isn't changed. There are providence conversions. Certain things can happen in people's lives that strike them and, wow, they say, that's, that's not a coincidence. That's God's hand. But their, their sin is never dealt with. There are text or song verse conversions. People have a text come into their mind and they think, well, now I'm converted. There are self-centered conversions. People that just talk about their own experiences all the time. They begin with themselves, they center in themselves, they end with themselves. But they never live for the glory of God. There are church or preacher-made conversions. Like Demas. There are slavish or trembling conversions. People that are always in fear of hell and death and never seem to come to liberty in Christ. There are shallow conversions. People who... Millions of them, as I said, who, who easily believe the gospel and never learn what the word faith really means. A total surrender of all that I am to the Lord Jesus Christ with far-reaching consequences. And they look at faith as just saying, well, 
I'm sorry, and I believe. And then there are temporary conversions, like Lot's wife. She seemed to be on the way, but she looked back. Oh, that's a pretty formidable list. 23 different kinds of false conversions. So this question is really important this morning, isn't it? What does the true conversion? There's only one kind of true conversion. Thank God he has myriads of true conversions in the world as well. But what is a true conversion? What does it look like? How do we define it? What do you experience when you're truly converted? That's the question this morning. 